concept of it was put together fairly quickly in the early 80s as a reaction to smaller, similar shaped aeroplanes that were being built in people's garages in America. There was a very famous American design called a laser that broke the balance between the East and the West in aerobatic competitions in the 70s, 80s. The Russians realised they had to design something a little bit more like that, so they built what became colloquially known as a laser yak because the configuration of the aeroplane is mid-wing symmetrical for positive and negative aerobatic flying. I was coming through the aerobatic competition ranks initially in a Starduster, which is a lovely plane but not very good for aerobatic competitions. Fell in love with the Yak-55, it was a very unusual rare aircraft. Uh, I bought a share in the one that Alan had imported and having that share I then wanted my own and then bought this one and it's, it's just a beautiful aircraft. She's very predictable, huge character, so it's very much a, a point where you want to go aircraft. There's no anhedral, no dihedral, no wash in, wash out. If you let go, it just starts to quietly go its own way and very, very capable. So it's not as expensive as something like a Sukhoi, but it's really got 70 to 80% of that sort of capability. I used to fly uh, Yak-52 for many years and uh, I really sort of come to the limit of what that aircraft could do. It's an absolutely fantastic uh, aerobatic training aircraft and can take you well into intermediate. But I was looking for something more capable now and the Yak-55 offered uh, a very good purchase price uh, that could take you well into advanced and sort of play with unlimited aerobatics as well. It's a really fun aircraft to own. It's got uh, a lot of quirks with it being a Russian aircraft. Big radial engine here which makes engine handling just a little bit different um, and uh, having come from the Yak-52 background uh, that's been a real help there. A lot of quirks with it but it is a lot of fun and it's got a lot of character more so than a lot of maybe the plastic aircraft that are very popular nowadays. The 55 is completely different in its aerodynamic idea. First of all it's a single seater um, but primarily the wing section is symmetrical so that whether the airplane's up the right way or up the wrong way the wing works the same. All the Russian airplanes before then have been uh, non-symmetrical aerofoils. Also this was the first uh, Russian airplane to have almost full span ailerons to make the roll rate faster uh, and to do away with flaps which make it easier to land and that kind of thing. And finally the wing is positioned sort of halfway up, it's shoulder mounted wing so that it sits here across the pilot's chest. This keeps the pilot's head close to the centre of rotation when you're rolling the airplane very fast. and uh, makes it much easier to orientate and to be precise about uh, bank angles and so on without instrumentation or just visually. The controls are very conventional, they're, they're, they're light, they're predictable. The ailerons are full span, so we've, I've tuned those really so they're, they're far more precise. It's light in pitch. Its rolling, flicking and, and pitch predictability is, is very, very strong. It displays very well for the judges and it allows them to judge your flying very predictably. So it's a good display platform, but every little error is picked up from the ground, which can be a downside if you're in any way imprecise. Experience-wise, to actually fly this aircraft, I wouldn't say that uh, it's beyond the average PPL at all. Uh, the tail wheel is actually fixed to the rudder, so it's got a very good ground handling characteristics. Handling itself is quite sprightly and requires a bit of a soft touch compared to maybe your average Cessna, um, but no way is it beyond uh, your average PPL. The engine, again, being radial is a little bit different, so that might require a little bit of conversion training. The Yak-52 being a two-seat aircraft with the same engine makes it a great introduction to it. So once you've got maybe a couple of hours on a Yak-52, then you'll have no trouble slipping into a Yak-55. It's, it's a sadness to me that there are so few in the world and you could never make these in the West. So they're milled out of derillium, they have solid titanium leaf undercarriage. Uh, it's, it's like Rockwell building pit specials. They're just amazing aircraft and once they're gone, they're gone. We'll never see an aircraft like this again. So it's a real privilege to own it. You know at some point the world will have moved on um, and we won't see anything like a Yak-55 again and we'll look back and say well, what a really great classic aircraft that was.